Question 21 says, um, which interval notation represents the set of all numbers greater than or equal to 5 and less than 12? So numbers greater than 5 and less than 12, uh, greater than or equal to 5 and less than 12 would be integers like 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 5 would count, but 12 wouldn't count. Now in uh, the notation most people are familiar with, this would look like this x is greater than or equal to 5 and it's also uh, less than 12. But interval notation they say this a different way. They write the 5 and the 12 and they put a square bracket around the 5 to indicate greater than or equal to whereas they put a rounded parentheses after the 12 to indicate uh, strictly less than. And that's why of these four uh, of these four choices the answer is choice one. Had the question said uh, greater than 5 and less than 12 then it would look like this. That's like saying x is greater than 5 and strictly less than 12. If the if it was greater than or equal to 5 and less than or equal to 12 that would look like that. So the square bracket is when it includes the number and the rounded parentheses is when it doesn't. Okay, next question. Number 22. Uh, 400 licensed drivers participated in the Maths Club survey on driving habits. The table below shows the number of drivers surveyed in each age group. So there's 150 drivers in 16 to 25, 129 in this age group, and so on. Which statement best describes a conclusion based on the data in the table? Uh, choice one says it may be biased because no one younger than 16 is surveyed. Well, I think this one's not right because in general people under 16 aren't allowed to drive anyway. Two, it would be fair because many different age groups were surveyed. Well, it's true that uh, a lot of different age groups are surveyed, but some age groups were surveyed and had a lot more representation than the others. So, so I think this is not going to be the answer. Uh, it would be fair because the survey was conducted by the math club students. Well, um, that doesn't make it fair. And then it says it may be biased because the majority of drivers surveyed were in the younger age intervals. And that's true. The majority of drivers were in these uh, these younger age intervals, so I'm going to say choice four. Question twenty-three. A formula used for calculating velocity is v equals one half a t squared. What does a express in terms of v and t? Well, this is kind of like a, like an algebra problem, um, but instead of having numbers, there's mostly variables. So v equals one half a t squared. And they, they want to get the a uh, isolated. Well, the, the way you get this a isolated is first if you multiply both sides by 2, then these cancel out. Now I have 2v equals a t squared. Now, uh, imagine a question was like um, 20 equals a times 5 you would solve that one by dividing both sides by 5. Well this is a times t squared. The t squared is kinda like the 5 over here. So you divide both sides by t squared and you get your answer. a equals 2v uh, 2v over t, t squared. These are all equal signs here. Question number 24. What is the sum of, hold on, uh, this looks a little better. What's the sum of negative x plus 7 over 2x plus 4 and 2x plus 5 over 2x plus 4? Well, <clears throat> the thing to realize about this question is that these two fractions have the exact same denominator. And just like when the denominator is just a, a regular number and we look for common denominators, same thing happens with adding fractions. 
So this becomes just adding the numerators together. Minus x plus 7 plus 2x plus 5. The minus x and the plus 2, those combine to become 1x. And the plus 7 and the plus 5 combine to be plus 12. And the denominator is just 2x plus 4. So x plus 12 over 2x plus 4, which is choice number 1. Question 25. Steve ran a distance of 150 meters in one and a half minutes. What is his speed in meters per hour? Well, I think I would do this one as some kind of a ratio. So we have meters and minutes are my two things that I'm relating. And we have our fact from the question that he goes 150 meters in one and a half minutes. Then the question is, how many meters does he run with his speed in meters per hour? Well, meters per hour is how many meters would I run if I ran for just one hour, which is 60 minutes. Uh, you can finish this question up by cross multiplying. 1.5x, 60 times 15 is 9,000. Uh, 6 times 15 is 90. Yeah, so that's 9,000. Then you divide both sides by 1.5. Which you can do on your calculator. 9,000 divided by 1.5 is 6,000. Which is choice number 4. Question number 26. How many different three-letter arrangements can be formed using the letters in the word absolute? if each letter is used only once. Well, absolute has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different letters. And the quick way to do this question, one of these came up earlier, there's eight different letters that can be chosen for the first letter of this three letter arrangement. Notice how they use the word arrangement and not the letter words because they want to include things that don't count as official English words. Each letter is used only once, so that leaves seven letters left to go into that second position, and then six letters left to go in that position. So we end up with uh, 56 times 6, which is 336, which is choice 4. Well, for this next question, they want us to factor uh, 3x squared minus 3x minus 18. In general, when there's a coefficient out here, it's more complicated to factor. This is a multiple choice question. You could just multiply all these out, all four choices, and see which one works. But in this question, there's a bit of a shortcut. Notice how 3, 3, and 18 are all divisible by 3. So you can use greatest common factor to factor out a 3 to get this. And then x squared minus x minus 6, we look for two numbers that multiply to give me negative 6 and add to give me negative 1. Well, those are negative 3 and plus 2. And that's actually the answer to this question, choice 2. Question number 12.